What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys one of the OG deck profiles that I've always done on the channel and that is Yosenju but not just any Yosenju deck profile, it's Yosenju Kaiju. Now the really cool thing about Yosenju Kaiju is it's an anti-meta deck and it's actually funny enough really good into the meta because it can break pretty much any single board and while it doesn't OTK every single time, it can set you up to win a lot of games. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you can take this to a YCS or a regional and win the event but what i am saying is if you guys want to play an anti-meta deck something a little bit more fun and competitive this is the way to go so if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one if you guys want to see combo videos deck profiles duels all that kind of stuff it is all on the channel i upload five days a week for you guys i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and with that let's get into the deck profile okay so just before we get into the deck profile i do want to start off by saying that if you guys have ever watched any of my other yosenju deck profiles i I always swear by these ratios and i'm not going to change these ratios up at all at least until maybe new things come out but at the moment these are the best yosenjus you want to play you don't want to play any other other ones that are available at the moment these are the best ones to play and that's three yosenju comma one comma one being the most important one in this deck specifically because it does have that bounce effect which is insanely powerful in a kaiju build like this one then three yosenju comma two and three yosenju comma three you have to be playing three ofs of all of these are the most important cards to be playing in your deck comma three gets you to two or to one and then all of them normal summon each other out and then i'm also playing two yosenju sujik yosenju sujik here is very very important as well because it boosts all your yosenju monsters attacks it helps you beat your opponent this is one of your win cons because essentially what this deck wants to do is you want to break your opponent's boards now don't get me wrong it's not impossible to otk with this deck however it's not like you're going to be otking every single turn so for that reason you do need the sujik because it does help you boost your yosenjus that don't have incredibly high attack points to some decently beefy monsters because think about it comma 2 is 1800 with a sujik that's 2800 comma 1 is going to be 26 with a sujik you have 25 on comma 3 so it's really really powerful you do need to be playing double sujik sujik is the one you search always once you get these three in rotation because these three are the most important three but like i said comma one is the most important in this deck specifically because what it allows you to do is it allows you to kaiju your opponent bounce that kaiju back and then you can kaiju your opponent again so it's very very powerful in that sense so you need to be playing three comma one and honestly you need to be playing three of all of these because these are the most important cards in your deck and then we are playing three gamma seal two cumongus as well as one juzakiru i guess you could also play godarla here instead of cumongus it doesn't really matter what the names are the only thing that's really important is you need to be playing three different names in this deck specifically Specifically because you are playing three interrupted kaiju slumber and so for that reason you want to be playing different names so you're never in the situation where you draw all of the names and you then you can't use the slumber anymore right or if i draw double cumongus let's say then i can still use kaiju slumber because i have two more names so you always want to be playing at least three names and i like six kaijus here i think six kaijus are the best now the reason i'm maxing out on gamma seal is because funny enough you can actually otk through gamma seal a lot of the time because it's the lowest attack so that's why i like to play three of the gamma seal the only one that you could switch out is you could play godarla instead of cumongus if you're worried about barrier statue but a lot of the time that's not a big problem anyways because all your yosenju commas are normal summons and i mean they're wind anyways that doesn't matter because they're all normal summons but the point is like comma one can always bounce a barrier statue that's bothering you so uh, in, in the thunderies matchup funny enough it's actually not that impactful to be playing the godarla here i just wanted to give you guys another option as long as you're playing six kaijus with three different names that's the most important thing and then three slumber of course slumber is really good because in the graveyard it also lets you banish itself so you can search a kaiju to your hand for later so it's really really powerful so yeah i really really like this engine helps you break a lot of different boards and then we are playing some hand traps now you guys might be noticing that i'm not playing ash blossom here and i'm gonna get into that in just a second but we are playing three nibiru three dimension shifter three gamma as well as the one of course driver that you need to be playing so now why am i not playing ash blossom so d shifter is insanely powerful in this deck because all the yosenjus come back to your hand so this is again in theory but in theory these cards should never be going to the graveyard right your kaijus are going to be special summoning to your side of the field your commas are all going to be coming back to your hand there shouldn't be any real cards in your graveyard for d shifter especially going second at any point you're always going to have d shifter live right however i do want to say this the problem with playing hand traps like ash veiler imperm stuff like that is that it all puts cards in the graveyard for you which could make d shifter dead if you look at the other hand traps we're playing nibiru puts itself on the field not in the graveyard you have gamma puts itself on the field and then banishes itself so it doesn't go to the graveyard so i'm playing these ones because one they work and synergize very well well with d shifter but they're also super impactful in today's meta game think about nibiru nibiru is so good in today's meta you have shifter which is of course we all know how powerful this card is this card by itself can shut decks out so shifter is very very important and then gamma of course 
is very, very nice because of course, like if you do something this on your turn, funny enough, it can happen. If you summon this on your turn, it gives you access to your link plays, to some synchro plays, which is also really, really nice. But the nice thing about Gamma in general is that it really hits every single deck and it's very, very powerful. So that's why I like playing these nine, essentially, I guess 10 with driver, but these nine hand traps, I should say, are the best ones because unlike the other hand traps like Ash Vela that I mentioned earlier as well, is they don't actually break any boards. Okay, Shifter technically doesn't break any boards, but Shifter completely stops your opponent most of the time from making a board to begin with. However, Gamma can break boards because it destroys monsters. Nibiru destroys monsters when your opponent gets the five summons. So that's why I really like these ones because it helps you break boards. The Kaijus help you break boards. The whole point of this deck is to break your opponent's boards and put them in a situation where they really can't remake a board afterwards because you can break through all their resources at any point, right? So that's why I really, really like these nine. And that's why I'm not playing Ash, Valor, Imperm because those cards are insanely powerful. Don't get me wrong. But it just in a deck like this, these ones just synergize so well with each other that I think you need to be playing these nine. And then for the spell cards at the end, we are playing two tanky, of course, because tanky surges any one of your Yusenjus. So this is extremely important. Three extravagance, because again, you don't really go into your extra deck too often. There is one play where if you're going for the OTK, you can do this. So I'm going to get to that in a minute, but you guys can see you're just maxing out on the ones you really need. Extravagance is really good because it gets you more cards in your hand, especially when you are forced to go second. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, hey, if I need the extra Kaiju or I need the extra Border Breaker, something like that, extravagance does come up. So extravagance is really, really good. And on top of that, worst case scenario, it baits out a negate if they have an ash or something like that and let's say you really need a tanky to go through to get a comma or you know you really need a slumber to go through to break your opponent's board well you can stop them from having the ash because then they're gonna have to use it on the extravagance if they let you draw two you're probably gonna be winning the game so most of the time they're gonna have to ash this and then all your other plays are gonna go through so it's really important to be playing extrav then we're playing one harpy's feather duster the thing is as you guys can see this deck is very focused on beating monster based decks but it's not very good against backward decks so we have to have some kind of backward removal so harpy's feather duster is that for us so is lightning storm lightning storm is also really good for us for the front row and the back row matchups lightning storm essentially acts as another harpy's feather duster for you for any back row matchups but of course in any combo decks this card can break boards or just even just bait out negates which is really really important so we have to be playing these four and then the last card we're playing the 40th card in the deck that helps you otk is the double or nothing so for anyone who doesn't know how this combo works i'm going to explain it when i get into the extra deck but double or nothing is essentially the only brick in your deck the nice thing about this though is it does give you another option and an opportunity to otk through a lot of different boards again your sole purpose of this deck is not necessarily always to otk but it just gives you the otk option which is very very powerful so i like playing the one of this and then let's get into the extra deck here because the extra deck is going to make the main deck make a lot more sense so here we're playing three gaga cowboy of course this is one of the most important cards in the osenju because this deck does so much poke damage with the osenju monsters that essentially once your opponent gets down to like you know 500 600 life points you just go cowboy for game you'd be surprised how often this comes up like this comes up really really often so then we're playing three utopia double and let me just get into the, how the combo works here so you make utopia double with any two level fours which is your yosenju monsters and then essentially you activate its effect to detach a card and then you get to search the double or nothing from your deck to your hand at that point you can also rank up into utopia i guess it's not ranking up because they're both rank fours but you know what i mean you get to put utopia on top of that as an ixie summon and then utopia has the effect when a monster declares an attack you can detach a card to negate the attack so what happens now is let's say you have a kaiju on your opponent's side of the field let's say you have a gamma seal right and then you have the utopia you're gonna go utopia attack into gamma seal you're gonna detach to negate your own utopia's attack at this point utopia's at 5,000 attack right so you're gonna negate its own attack and when you do negate its own attack it makes double or nothing live which means that now utopia can attack again but it's actually going to be a 10,000 attack so utopia at 10,000 attack over gamma seal is 7,800 damage and see at that point if you have any other yosenju on your side of the board which is very easy in this deck this deck can easily put up three four yosenju names or worst case scenario you just have a kaiju name because you kaiju your opponent and then you summon a kaiju to your side of the field it's going to help you otk your opponent so that's why this combo is really really good and that's why we're playing three of each of these because we're playing extra of course these are the nine cards that are the most important in the deck that's why you're maxing out on them then we're playing two zeus because for some reason if you don't end up otking then you can go at least into zeus and it does something for you so zeus is kind of nice in that sense and then we're playing one omega for the gamma one draco berserker also for the gamma this can come up if you know you gamma on your turn this actually becomes really really nice because if you go extravagance and they go ash and then you go gamma and then now you have a free level eight synchro monster on your side of the field that can help you beat your opponent. Very, very powerful combo. So that's why you want to be playing these two. And then two cards you never really go into, but I did want to give us a link option if we needed to is a one pentastag. This can do piercing damage if you need to. This can come up, I guess, you know, if you have to OTK your opponent 
through a defense position monster you can make pentastag and then make the utopia combo and then essentially otk through a defense position monster that can happen as well so that's why i like playing the one pentastag here and then one lambda because sometimes if you do have a kaiju and an ibiru on your side of the field they're not really doing anything for you and if you have a gamma in your hand you would rather have that negate with the gamma so what you can do is you can use these two monsters to make a lambda and then at least at that point then your gamma is live again it doesn't come up too often but when it does come up it's very very good so that's why i like this deck how it's like structured trust me this deck has so much funny enough synergy within each other like the yosenju comma one with the kaijus works so so well all the hand traps synergize with each other very very well even your spell cards are really important because what your spell cards enable you to do is these get to beta a lot of the gates before you start doing your actual combos so it's very very nice how this deck synergizes with each other it's very anti-meta how this deck works but it's also very very powerful it can break through essentially any board really and it can compete and stay up to pace with today's metagame funny enough now i'm not saying you're gonna win a ycs or a regional with this deck but what i am saying is that if you want to take this deck go to a locals maybe even top a locals with it it's very very possible i think this deck is very very fun and i think you should try it out yourselves so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy this is my take on yo senju kaiju for today's format the july 2022 format now like i said the yosenju counts that i really like i'm not changing because these are the best counts you don't have to force yourself to play other names because there's no point you want to be competitive and to be competitive you have to be consistent and this is the most consistent way to play the deck that can break pretty much any meta board in today's format as well as set up yourself to either otk or win in a couple turns so thank you guys all for watching if you guys did enjoy make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one i appreciate every single one of you we're almost at 7,000. we're on the road to 7,000. let's make it happen thank you guys all for watching and with that it's Banko signing out peace